This video is to show you how to use TerraSync on a Tremble Juno SB. You're going to want to start by turning on your GPS unit, which the, the on switch is on the left hand side of the device. When it comes on, you should have a home screen similar to this. And before we go into TerraSync, we're going to want to make sure that the clock on the GPS unit is the same as the area you're in. Right now, mine says it's 644, and so does my computer. So I'm set that it's accurate enough. It might be off by a few seconds, but that's not really going to matter. You're going to also want to make sure that the date is the same. Um, it's important to have the clock right and the date right, because TerraSync won't let you use it if it detects that the time is way off. It might give you some leeway but not too much. The reason being, um, you have to be accurate, not only with when you take points, but the GPS satellite shoots a code to the GPS unit in your hand, and it uses the time it takes that code to reach the device to figure out your location. So time is actually very important when determining your location. So to if your your time is not set correctly, what you want to do is you want to use your stylus and click on start, go down to settings, click on system, and go into clock and alarms. And here you can set your time zone. To set the hour, you just click on uh, the hour area and then just use these up and down keys to set the time. You can do the same thing with minutes and seconds. You can also click on this right here and it'll shift from PM to AM. If your date is wrong, which can happen sometimes if your GPS is drained uh, or the battery goes, sometimes it will reset the clock. And you just use this calendar to find the, the correct date. When that's all done, you just click OK. If you had made any changes, a window would have popped up saying, do you want to save these clock settings? And you just click yes. Now with all that done, what we're going to do is we're going to go right into TerraSync now. So you want to hit on start again. Uh, we're, I have it here in my quick list, but we're going to go to programs and choose it from there. Uh, just because you might not have it in your your quick steps. So you just want to click on it in here. The more often you use it, the actual quicker it becomes uh, loading on your, your device. The first few times I used it, it took a little bit to actually turn on. And this is our sky plot. And our satellites that are available to us will appear in this window. As you can see, we got five that have just joined us, and with a sixth one in white. The white ones are satellites that are present, but we're not connected to. The ones that are black, we're connected and receiving a signal. And here they'll also give you a list, and this will show you how strong that signal is. As you can see, four and five, we're really connected to. Uh, the other ones, not so much. And it's good to know that because this lets you know if you should really avoid buildings or heavily covered areas. And up here we have our accuracy. Right now I'm pretty high. I have uh, 16 meters. And that's mainly because I'm right next to a building. So that's really throwing off my signal. So now that we have satellites, we can actually start our project. And we need to create a project folder to put all our data in. So we're going to go to status, use the drop down menu, go to data, and we're going to create our new data file. And we're going to leave file type and location alone. And I'm just going to name this test. And there is an autocomplete on this program, which can be very helpful when uh, using it in the field. And here it asks if we want to create, or we have to choose a data dictionary. I only have a generic one on mine right now. Uh, we'll have a video later on 
telling you how to create your own data dictionary. And these can be very useful in personal uh, projects because you can pretty much have a feature for anything. Uh, stop signs, trees, sewer pipe access, anything you can really think of. Curbs, sidewalks, parking lots, buildings. And each one of those will ask unique questions that you can answer out in the field. And when you transfer this to a GIS software, it will carry all that information into the attribute table. So once that's all done, we can click on create. And right here, it's asking us to confirm antenna height, which is one meter, um, set for one meter. And that's generally the, the norm because when you hold it, it's generally by your waist, which is about three feet or a meter off the ground. And it's also important to keep the, the screen, what you see right here, pointed towards the sky. The reason being is if you drop it by your knees, you might lose a few satellites or signal altogether. So your accuracy will go down and uh, or you might lose signal altogether, which will really hurt if you're doing a line or area feature, because if you're walking in lose signal, you're not collecting points. And as soon as it starts picking up points again, from where it lost signal to where it picked up signal again, it's just going to draw a straight line, which can really throw off your feature. So we're just gonna click OK and accept that as our antenna height. And here we have our three features that we can create in our on our GPS. We have a point, a line, and an area. And I'm gonna go through all three and, and talk about them. First one we're going to talk about is the point. As soon as I clicked on it, there is this bullseye that's blinking with a number increasing. Now what that's telling us is that it is taking and it is plotting all these points. Right now it has plotted 16 points. And if I were to click OK, it would take the average of those. That way you're a little bit more accurate than just taking one point that could be 17 meters offset by increasing the number it'll you're more likely to get an accurate reading than just taking one the average to shoot for is about 20. Uh, obviously if you have a higher inaccuracy you want a a few more but 20 is normally the the set and in here, they you're all allowed to put a comment if you want. I'm not going to. So once you're done, you would just hit OK. Now, if you hit on point and nothing, if this didn't show up as blinking and these numbers increasing, it would be a button right here that said play. Uh, right now, it says resume. And so this will let you start the process if it doesn't start automatically. Once that's done, you just click OK. And the feature has been stored. Now we're going to go on to line. And when I click the line, what I get is a pencil drawing a line. Now you want to make sure that this is going before you start walking. Because if you don't, you might do the whole trail walk or whatever you're doing and find out that nothing was actually recorded. If it is not going, once again, you just click on the button that's right here, and that will either, that will start it. So this is where it's important not to uh, drop the GPS by your knees, or you will lose satellite coverage most likely, and you might get a straight line where you didn't really want a straight line. So once that's done, you just click OK. And your feature is stored. Area works just like line, except where uh, the start point is and the end point is, it will connect those two points, closing off the, the area. So it's important in here to have a visual marker when doing an area. 
This can actually be something on the site, maybe a tree or a rock, a boulder, a bench, anything. Or you can actually bring your own, like a yellow cone, a flag, something to let you know where you have to, where you started and where you have to finish. And that's it for war area. Now, as you can see, we aren't really seeing what I'm doing. Uh, that's because this is just the data dropping points. To actually see what I've done, we can go to our map. It's just up here. Click on map. And I haven't been moving, so all my points are... They should be all together, but in reality, because my accuracy is so off, they're kind of being thrown around. So we're going to zoom in. Right now, uh, the scale bar is set from 0 to uh, 100, 250 meters. So we're going to zoom in. As you can see, everything's not on top of each other. My area has drifted over here. My line is kind of squiggly. And my GPS unit hasn't moved. That just shows you what this is happening when this inaccuracy is going on. So, the best thing you want to do when using a GPS is stay away from large buildings, uh, reflective buildings, especially uh, whether they're mirrored or metal or there's just a lot of windows. These can uh, mess up with your, your accuracy. You also want to avoid tr heavy tree cover as much as possible. Sometimes you can't avoid that. Same thing with buildings, but these are things that you have to know that will affect your, your accuracy. As you can see, this little red X is actually my GPS unit, and it's kind of jumping around, and like I said, my GPS hasn't moved since I began this. And I have eight satellites in it. You can see that it actually jumped down to where I'm about eight meters off. So my units are generally where I am, but this is where post-processing really comes in handy. And we'll talk about that in another video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to data and we're going to close it. Close this file, are you sure? Yes. And we're not going to start a new one, we're going to, we're just going to leave TerraSync. Now say you close everything down, you go in and you realize that you forgot to plot one more point or create one more line or area. What you're going to do is you're going to go back outside, open up TerraSync. And I'm going to show you how to open up your an older data file. Now let it be known, um, after I think it's two weeks, you cannot edit a data file anymore. It just won't let you. You'll have to create a new one. Uh, we got all our satellites already. So you want to go to data. And rather than the new, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the drop menu next to new and go to existing file. And this is why it's important to choose which one you want uh, for a uh, title because I have two here from the same date and when you let it choose its own it will generally do date and month and then like two numbers in a letter which can be kind of confusing so I'm just gonna click on test and open it's once again gonna confirm that the antenna height is one meter and it will show us what we created beforehand. And we can actually go in and we can edit these if we want. We can delete them. But we don't want to update them. We want to go out and collect another feature. 
So you just go up here and choose collect features. And then you can go in and choose whatever you have to do. Uh, and that's it for this tutorial.